Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I want to show you 10 Google Workspace features that you might be overlooking. Let's go ahead and get started with our first one, which is right here in Google Slides, and it has to do with video. So I have my blank slide here. I'm going to insert a video, and I already know the URL for the video that I want to use. It's this one here. So I'm just going to paste it in and then select it. And I'm going to insert that into my slide. But one of the really cool features of Google Slides is that I can specify a start and stop time for the video within the slide. So when I click on that video in the slide, I can specify my start time. Let's say I want to start it at 20 seconds in and I only want to show it until it's one minute and 10 seconds in. Just need to show a little bit of it. And I can have it play automatically or play only when I want it to play. And by the way, that's my preference is to play it manually just because sometimes what I'm saying and how my slides advance don't always match up. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is an easy way to create a new Google document. And that is to simply type in docs.new in your web browser to open up a new blank Google document like this. Just go docs.new and you'll have a new blank Google document open up. Now, this will also work for slides as well by just simply typing slides.new and we'll have a new Google slide presentation open up right away. Now, of course, you do have to be signed into your Google account when you do that. Now, our third trick will deal with Google Forms. So I'm a big fan of using Google Forms to make quizzes that are automatically graded for me. And one of the things that I realized that I do a lot is sometimes I would forget to put in a point value for one question and then I'd have to go back and manually adjust it after the fact. So when I'm making a quiz, what I do is I have changed my preferences so that I have a default value for every question on my quiz. And you can see right there, I have my default quiz point value of 10 points. So every quiz question will automatically be worth 10 points unless I go in and manually override it. And that's a really handy feature and time saver for me so that I don't forget to have a question be scored. Now you can also change that. You can make it worth five points. You can make it worth 25 points, but I use 10 as my default point value. And next, we're gonna look at one of my favorite little tricks for Google Sheets. So here I have my blank Google Sheet, which I opened by just typing in sheets.new in my address bar. And one of the features of Google Sheets that a lot of people overlook is that you don't have to be stuck with the default color scheme. There are themes that you can apply to Google Sheets. So just go to your format, select theme, and you can go over here and see all these kinds of different themes that you can apply. Maybe I'll use the, this one or that momentum theme or the earthy theme but within those default themes, you can customize them even further. Let's customize that and say that I want to use the Georgia font, which is my favorite font, as anyone who follows my blog probably knows. And we can change our text, our chart background color. I'm going to make it this bright yellow color. And accent color is going to be purple. And accent three color will be green. And you can see all those things, hyperlinks, let's make those blue, like a normal hyperlink. And I've now customized my theme for when I start to put tables and charts and graphs into my Google Sheet. Next, we'll take a look at some things you can do with Google Meet. So here I am in Google Meet, and you can see I have my webcam turned on, and you can see all the stuff that I have on the walls and on the shelf in my office here. But if you're doing a Google Meet from home, where maybe you have some personal effects that you don't want people to see, 
or there's something else in your background that you're trying to hide, or you just want to remove distractions for your students, one of the things you can do in Google Meet is blur your background. So go to the bottom right corner and you can select change background. And then you can go in and select slightly blur your background. And my background will get blurry as we go, or we can blur it even more. And now it's really blurry. Or, as you can see here, we could also apply some of these virtual backgrounds. Maybe I'd like to have a room with books on shelves in my background. And there I am with a much cleaner bookshelf than my real life bookshelf. Now, I should point out that if you're using a Chromebook, all of these backgrounds and blurring features may not be available to you depending upon your Chromebook. The next little trick we're going to look at deals with Google Classroom. So now let's take a look at a really neat thing you can do with Google Classroom. And this might help out a lot of you as you wind down this school year and start up the next school year. And that is duplicating an entire course that you've created in Google Classroom. Let's say, for example, I have my social studies fall 2019 class right here. Well, if I click on the copy button, I'm going to create a copy of that entire course. Now you can rename it later at any time. So I can say copy of social studies for fall 2021. Now I'm going to copy that. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy everything in the course in terms of the materials that I've given out and assignments that I've given out it doesn't copy the announcements, nor does it copy the student roster. So I can reuse this copy, including those assignments, but all my assignments are saved as drafts. And we'll take a look at that right now. Now that it's made a copy, we'll go into my classwork and we'll see that all of these are draft assignments and draft questions. Now I can go in schedule this to appear later and say I'm going to make this for all students and I want it to be assigned to go out oh let's say on Monday at 8 a.m and I can schedule that and now it's scheduled but this is really handy if you've spent the entire semester or the entire year developing materials and developing assignments that you've distributed into units in Google Classroom now you can reuse all of those, but when you go into your people, you'll notice you don't have any students in here because this copy is now ready for you to add your next batch of students into. Next, we're going to take a look at some cool things you can do with Jamboard, Gmail, Google Keep, and Google Drawings. So Jamboard is one of my favorite tools for making diagrams and charts to share with students and make copies of them to share with my students. And even though I'm not a great artist, I can still make some neat things with Google Jamboard. One of those things is I like to make a diagram. Now, I'm using a circle here. Let's say instead of a circle, I wanted to do some squares. And I want all my squares to be the exact same size and color. So I'm gonna change the color up here, make them red, with a fill color of blue, and I want them all to be the exact same size. So I'm just going to click on it once, open up this little menu here to say duplicate, and duplicate it as many times as I want because I want three copies of this right here. Now, let's say I want to write on top of this. Well, I'm going to put in my text box and say, this is my box one. And in box one, I'm going to change that to be green. And I'm going to make that a little bit larger, just like that. Now, I can move that box one to be back. Or I can now bring it backwards this way. And box one reappears. 
So it's a quick and easy way to duplicate objects in your Jamboard. Now, speaking of Jamboard, let's go from Jamboard to Google Drawings, where we can do some neat things with Google Drawings, including hyperlinking objects that are inside of our published drawings. So let's say I'm going to insert an image, and I want to insert an image that I have on my computer. And I have some pictures here on my computer for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to use this image right here. So I have that image in my Google Drawing. Now, on top of that, I could do a text box and then hyperlink the text. But instead of doing that, I'm going to just put in a little arrow here. And I'm going to spin that arrow around. And I can now hyperlink that arrow to any web page that I like. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So my hyperlink is going to go to the Wikipedia page that's all about the Airbus A380, which is the airplane we see right inside of that. Now, I can, of course, go back in and change that arrow color. I can make it red. I can even change the outline of it to make it green and red and make that larger as well. But the takeaway here is that I can hyperlink any element that's in my Google Drawing. And when I go to share this with my students, I'm going to put in Airbus A380. And I can share it with my students. I can say anybody who has the link to this, well, they can view it. And they'll be able to click on those links that I have included in the drawing. Next, we're going to take a look at some neat things you can do with Gmail. So one of my favorite overlooked features in Gmail or Google Workspace Mail is the ability to schedule messages to be sent at a later time. Let's take a look at this little feature. You can see here, I've drafted this message to parents of my students. Just a quick reminder that your children will have phys ed class outside on Tuesday. Please remember to send them with a second pair of socks in case their feet get wet. Sincerely, your child's teacher. Now, I might have written this on a Sunday afternoon, and I don't want to be bombarded with replies on Sunday evening because I don't want to answer lots of emails on Sunday evening. So I'm going to schedule this instead of going out immediately to go out on Monday morning. So how will I do that? Well, let's go down here to the send option and we'll click on that little down arrow to open up the schedule send option. And I'm going to pick a date and time to send this. I'm now going to send this on Monday morning. And it's going to go out at 7 o'clock a.m. And I'll schedule that sending so that I don't have to field replies until at least Monday morning. And our last little trick that we're going to look at is in Google Keep. I love Google Keep for reminders. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with this one. So maybe I have a reminder to do book inventory. I'm going to do book inventory. And I'll say, remember to use the spreadsheet, the department head gave out in Google Drive. Now I'm going to click on the Remind Me button. And while I can use a timed reminder, so I might say pick date and time, I'm gonna remind myself to do that again on Monday morning at let's say 8 a.m. I can do that, but I can also change that out and say pick place so that it allows me to have a reminder pop up on my phone if I'm using the Google Keep app on my phone 
when I get to a specific place, that reminder will pop up. I'm going to type in, for example, my school. And now I'll get that reminder popping up when I get to school. So those are 10 Google Workspace features that you might be overlooking and that I find really helpful. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit practicaledtech.com.